This is the 19th video in our series looking at how to complete a basic setup and configuration of a Synology Network Attached Storage Device, or as they're more commonly referred to, a NAS. As we mentioned in our previous video, when we initially set up and configured our Synology NAS, we fitted the NAS with a 2TB hard drive. However, as we want our NAS to be a media server, we now are starting to realise that the 2TB hard drive will not have enough storage capacity for our needs. To get around this problem, we fitted our NAS with two 1.5TB internal hard drives to create a 3TB volume. However, for anyone with a NAS that only has a single drive bay, this method for increasing storage capacity will not be possible. Luckily, as long as your Synology NAS has a USB port, you can quickly and easily increase the storage capacity of your NAS by using an external USB hard drive. So in this video, we will connect an 8TB desktop hard drive to our NAS, which will in turn automatically create a share that we can access via our home network. As you can see here, we are connected to this station manager via our administrator's account. So let's first connect our external USB hard drive to our NAS via a USB cable. Once our NAS has detected the USB hard drive, it will display an icon in the taskbar. If we select external devices, we are shown the status of our USB disk and provided with an eject button to safely dismount the external hard drive. From the DSM's desktop, we now need to select Control Panel. When Control Panel opens, we first need to ensure that we are in Advanced mode and not Basic mode. Now from within Advanced mode, we need to select the System group and the option External Devices. When the External Devices panel opens, we are shown any USB devices that have been connected to our NAS. If we select the down chevron next to USB Disk 1, we are shown some basic information about our external hard drive. You can see that this hard drive has been partitioned, and the main partition is not using a file system type that is supported by our NAS. As Smart is not supported by this model of external hard drive, the Smart Info and Smart Test buttons have been greyed out. In order for this external hard drive to be accessible to our NAS, we first need to format the drive. When we select Format, we're presented with two options. Formatting option will allow us to either format the entire disk or a partition on our disk. As we want to use as much of the 8TB of storage as possible, let's select Entire Disk. File system type will allow us to choose the file system that we wish to use with our external hard drive. As this station manager is built from Linux, we can use either ext4 or FAT32. If you are a Windows user, FAT32 may be the more familiar file type. However, because the version of FAT32 available here can only work with hard drives smaller than two terabytes, for us to get the full benefit of our 8TB hard drive, we have to use ext4. We're now warned that formatting will delete all data on our hard drive. When we select Yes, our hard drive is formatted. The size of our hard drive will dictate how long the formatting process will take. In this example, formatting an 8TB hard drive will take roughly 15 minutes. With the external hard drive now formatted, we can see that its status is being reported as normal. We can also see that the drive now consists of one partition, which has been assigned with the folder share name of USB Share 1. The drive is 8TB in size and uses ext4 as the file system type. If we ever need to disconnect the USB drive from our NAS, we will need to use the eject button. This will ensure that we do not corrupt any data when we disconnect the drive from our NAS. Settings will allow us to set which users and groups have permission to access the network share, USB Share 1. 
as we plan to use our external drive to store media files, we're going to give our fictitious family read-write access to the drive. We will do this by selecting local groups and then ticking the option read-write, which is adjacent to the family group. The family group was created in a previous video. Let's now select OK. Now still from within control panel, if we locate and select shared folder, we can see the external hard drive. With USB Share 1 highlighted, let's select Edit. From within the General tab, we can change the name of the network share being used by our USB hard drive. Let's change the name to Media. As the whole family will have access to this network share, there is the possibility that files are accidentally deleted. So we're going to enable Recycle Bin and restrict access to administrators only. When we select OK, the changes that we have made to our settings will be saved and the network share name assigned to the USB hard drive will be updated. The USB hard drive will now be treated like any other network share on our Synology NAS, which means it will be fully accessible via our home network. So to recap, in this video, we looked at how we can install and set up a USB external hard drive to give our Synology NAS additional storage capacity. In the next video in this series, we're going to take a look at the settings and options which relate to system updates.